Afternoon all. I'd like to do a new series on the Sicilian Defence. The Sicilian Defence is ECO codes B20 to B99. If we look at B21 at chessgames.com, uh, there's some very interesting information actually. Uh, there's this popularity graph, and you can see it, it was most popular in the 1950s, but then went down the idea of playing just F4 against the Sicilian. Uh, strategically, Black will try and aim, I guess, most of the time for d5 and try and prove this bishop is a bit blocked in by the pawn, and maybe try and get an outpost uh, square on f5. So I predict that that's how uh, Lawrence Day, one of the top practi practitioners, uh, would lose. But actually, um, a, a, a leading UK grandmaster, Mark Hebden, is also playing f4. It'd be interesting to see his uh, games or one or two in this. So this is Sicilian defense, b21. So you're playing f4. But it also covers d4 as well. It's shared. Uh, so that could be like the Morris Smith d4. So b21. Most popular in the 1950s. So there's a bit of ambiguity actually. Is it f4 or d4? That was most popular in the 50s. Uh, let's look from the white side then at a Lawrence Day game uh, and maybe a Hebden game after. Uh, so let's pick a, a sweet one. Um, a kind of one he won quite quickly. Uh, so this was in the Buffalo Insanity G60 1979 tournament. So it's called the McDonnell attack. Uh, so e4, so he plays f4. So is black going to go for a quick d5? No, perhaps this is just going into, um, this is, looks very modern actually with bishop b5. Um, kind of, this looks very dangerous actually for black. White's got a very nice position. The d5 hit here, I don't think it's that effectual. White's keeping uh, control of f5. He's not playing e5 here. So I think he's getting many of the benefits of that f4 move without uh, any of the downsides. He's actually getting uh, a very nice position here. He's sacking a piece for a g file attack, quite a vicious g file attack. I think he's going to get his piece back now with advantage. So I think he's got his piece back with advantage and look at black's pawn structure. So white's got a more solid pawn structure. He's going to be picking off pawns now I think. The isolated pawn, isolated pawn and he won here. So that that was really not showing any of the, the downsides. In fact he did seem to tear apart loads of people in this. Um, I wonder like Spraggett. Okay he lost to Spraggett who was definitely a GM at some point. This was in the Quebec 1980 tournament. So did uh, Spraggett, Kevin Spraggett, uh, effectively use a D5 strategy? He's playing E6 for D5. I say I thought this was the downside, but we have the check, now knight E5. Okay, it's not that easy, but this pawn's potentially, I think, a liability, positionally for white. Although now Spraggett's using some sort of gambit to get um, play check yes white's in difficulty <laughs> now if white has to play a move like king d1 i think the opening is not good check yes black's got loads of play connected rooks uh white king in the center trying to scramble i guess to the queen side uh but black's got just tons of pressure here and how's the finishing blow end so he wins the exchange there, and the king's still attacked, and the a pawn's a killer. So that that was uh, pretty unpleasant. I don't think we have to continue that. So okay, he didn't he didn't uh, like win every single game. This Lawrence Day guy with by playing f4. Uh, so his current fido rating is 22.24. So his highest level was 2.367. So who is actually Lawrence Day? Born February uh, 1949. He was a Canadian champion in 1990. Uh, he represented Canada at the 1967 World Junior Championship. Okay, so so I just thought it was interesting to check out that. Now, Mark Hebden, is he actually playing D4 or F4? This game against Morrison, was it D4 or F4? Okay, so B21. He plays F4 against Graham Morrison. So the McDonnell attack. So this is a logical D5. And again, I think is is the strategy for black complicated with this bishop b5 check? Um, so this is an interesting finding, really, 
that the players playing f4 they're not completely clueless uh, to black uh, trying to get an f5 knight they're, they're really interrupting that plan with this bishop b5 check idea um, so here it seems as though white's got a very pleasant uh, position and again look targeting black's queen side now as well look queen f2 so f7 and c5 uh, so, so it's not such a bad system. Even, even playing two f4 against the Sicilian defence uh, against Miles, did he dare to play two f4? Anthony Miles, one of uh, the UK's earliest um, grandmasters. So again, this bishop b5. So even though he's got that pawn on f4, it's kind of useful for for a knight to be on e5 there, and he got a draw uh, from this position, even with that pawn, you know, blocking in the bishop. Okay, Miles did have more counterplay as you'd expect. Power of Miles' strength to generate counterplay. In fact, the counterplay looks quite ferocious there. Um, but actually, that was a neat tactic just there to take and then Queen e6 to win the rook on c8. So, um, so that game ended up in a, dr a draw. It's not, it's got not go further there. So, okay, he lost the fat tactic in Hastings with the, the move f4. So how did that happen? G6. Okay, this looks like a, a a different like variation altogether with with knight c3 and bishop b5. So he is he he's allowing that bishop on b5 to be taken. And this looks like a you know a very nice plan. This queen h4 and f5. You know white's got rid of basically the problem bishop uh, the light square bishop and black that with the removal of that knight there's no unpleasant uh, knight d4 strategy from black. So this looks pleasant enough here, but I guess um, okay, it goes wrong because Fatchik ingeniously sacks his h pawn here, then uh, to be able to play knight takes e4. So he's hitting the queen, and he's going to play this knight takes f2 track check as a Zwischen zug if um, queen um, took takes takes knight f2. So bishop g5, and now it's getting a bit messy. I think so. Black's just nicked a very good position with that tactic, actually. A pawn up, and he went on to win uh, this game. But anyway, it did look promising for a while. Uh, the f4 move. I don't think that can be um, all to blame for that disaster. If we look uh, carefully, it, it looks. This looks like a perfectly uh, reasonable idea. Wouldn't transpose it into. He's got loads of wins. Davies, 33 moves, 1983 Nottingham. So quick d5, but now this bishop b5 check's really annoying here. So he's uh, potentially, oh, he's throwing in f5 now when he's got a chance. So material grabbing, but um, he's getting the center, I, I expect, here. It's probably worth it. Check. He interrupts the king, okay. But. Um, White's still holding on to that pawn persistently, and I think White's oh, he's just one material with that that pin and that tactic. He's just one material. Uh, so Davies is just trying to generate counterplay, and basically, uh, it's not happening. White's just consolidated with that move just now. So if queen takes rook, knight f7 is winning a rook actually, takes queen e8. So that shows that you know the dangers of this f4 system. Um but it's it's low popularity at the moment. So I guess there's some key game uh happened. Uh Botvinnik Petrosian, nineteen fifty two. Um notable game actually in this line. So let's have a look at the two notable games. So Botvinnik Trying it against Petrosian. So what did Petrosian do? But this looks a bit timid, this d3 here to knight f6. Now, now it does look, with this knight retreat, you know it loses time. This f5, I think, strategy that I've been mentioning, uh, which has not, not cropped up yet, I think it's going to crop up here. That a beautiful knight on f5. It's almost like positionally patronizing to see this. It's like as though White's beginner, that beautiful knight on f5. <laughs> Petrosian's going to really uh, do over Botvinnik, castling on the queen side. It's all classic, smooth, uh, routine, thematic play from Black here. So getting that g-file trump 
from the positional uh, trump. So sacrificing that beautiful knight, but he's got a G file, uh, a raging pressure now on the seventh rank on the G file. A5, nice. Um, so what's the idea here? If takes bishop c5, but if rook takes, I'm not totally sure. Maybe just bishop takes b4 and then bishop c5. So that seems to be a very interesting move, nabbing a pawn there. And now black's just probably just winning this ending. So that, that was a notable game where um, you see that uh, a passive d3 and d5 this i don't think this is particularly good for white if if white has to play e5 then that retreats good enough i think so that was a notable game but what about from from this other towel this towel game uh from the white point of view then but this was more a gambit see this is this is why we've got a bit of confusion should they be branched together on b21 um cuz this is just fundamentally different d4 to f4 more smith gambit territory um, so how did Tal play this Maura Smith Gambit? Completely different game strategy. It's got both his rooks very nice. I like to play it like this myself in, in Blitz. So he's put pressure on f7 now with this queen c4. So black's being a bit desperate here with that d5. And now, whoa, whoa, queen sack. I've, I think it's back row. There's a back row implication there. Knight takes a knight e7 check. Or is it? Um, probably because if the king moves, yeah, rook d8. Um, I, I think it's some sort of back row indication, or is it knight? No, it might be knight takes f6 check, then rook d8 because the knight's covering the exit point g7. If even if g takes, so knight takes, so white's just one material basically, he's just one material. Ouch! So now the threat's rook, rook d8, mate. Wow, this this was a real slaughter in the Morris Smith Gambit, Smith Morris Gambit. If we look at that in overview, sorry, I know I'm going through these very very quickly, but it, it was just it's, I'm just really trying to get a gist of of B21. But we're seeing a conceptual difficulty here that there's an ambiguity. What does B21 mean? Does it mean two F4 or does it mean two D4? Um, and if that's the case. Then the popularity graphs really need to be split. You know, isn't you know? Do we really uh, um, mean the popularity was was highest in in the fifties for the Morris Smith or for F four? But anyway, that was quite a crush. So these notable games are worth looking at. There's a Morphe game. Uh, so which one is that with F four or D four? It's with D four. Uh, so this was game of the day, February two twenty third, two thousand and nine. Um, so black is just king safety sh shot a bit to pieces and white's got these raking bishops now on the diagonals and this looks like it's all over um, probably yeah queen d6 ouch winning the bishop of that pin and okay so so this was a painful game as well for Morphe's opponents in in the D4 line, so D4 Morris Smith, or is it F4? So I don't know. So that's that's a little difficulty actually. I'm gonna have to think about this for the series. If we, this is otherwise, this ECO structure w would be quite interesting. If we go back to B21, it would be interesting, but it's because it's mixed F4 and D4. I don't know anymore. Uh, so we got Lawrence Day, Mark Hedden, and John Co Cochrane as as white. Um, so if we if we look at an old Cochrane game, he had a, a disaster here in twenty four moves against Orton. Oh, this was with D four though. I think Black's just grabbed the center here with that quick D five here. He's just grabbed the center. Ouch. Um, greater central control, and uh, White's king side is slightly weakened. Um, I would expect a bad game from White here. Now black's got a very nice center. And there's a past D pawn as well to contend with. Back row's a bit weak. And he's even winning rook on A1. These guys never got out of the box. So um yeah, yeah, this this is a this is a major issue. We can't really study this if if it's got these two major branches. 
Um, I might mention it to chess games com. Uh, what does this popularity graph mean? Does it mean f4 or d4? Or can there be two graphs? Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.